birds flying high, you know what I mean. Yeah. Sound in the sky, you know how I feel. Yeah. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel it's on. New day, it's a new dawn, it's a new life. Oh, 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 oh. Me and I feeling My name is William Rhodes. I'm a mixed media artist and I'm also the director of the intergenerational program through Bayview Senior Services. And it's an honor to be here with Joyce J. Scott my godmother in art. But one thing that I've always admired about Joyce, and I just wanted to ask her, Joyce has always been about the community. She came here several years ago and did a uh, glass making beadwork workshop, which was like, had tons of people from the community being involved. And the fact that she has accomplished so many things uh, is a MacArthur uh, Genius Award Fellow, has done so many great things, but yet she still finds time to be a part of the community. I just want to ask her the question why she chooses to do that when there are so many artists that reach her level of success, but it seems like somehow they kind of drift away from that. And why does she feel that that's important to be a part of the community, and also why does she feel intergenerational programs are important? Hi everybody, my name is Joyce J. Scott. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a visual and performing artist. Ta-da! This is not my first even adventure here. I was here a few years ago, and I taught beadwork, and then I went over to do glasswork, and we had a really great lunch. It was, I had a really great time with all of the folks who were living here, and so I'm back. The Rose and the Pig, we got a tiki bar, Everything's perfect, because they know as a visual and performing artist, I'm ready for fun. I'm a sculptress, a jeweler, a performance artist, an actress, and a singer. I also do hand puppets if I'm forced, and I might move a little bit too. I'm not a preacher, I'm not a politician, sometimes I'm a teacher. But my bully pulpit, the place that I stand, and talk about the issues that trouble me are via my artwork. So I, like any other citizen, I'm really upset by the violence and racism and genderism and ageism and all the isms that exist. And the way that I get it out of me, the way that I stay an individual who's worth living, is through my artwork. I've given this a lot of thought. At the age of 74, it's sort of like, why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, I was one of those kids who was loved. I was swaddled and kissed and, and really taken care of by almost everything. It really was the village raising me. I did not have many problems in my youth, and the ones that I have, I've worked on. <laughs> my parents were sharecroppers in North and South Carolina picking tobacco and picking cotton. They were not able to have an academic education. They had me, and I love school. Uh, the light was shining all around me, and they and others like them really gave me great support. My, my uh, godparents did the same. You ask me why I stay in my community, because I ain't scared of my people. I remember when I was young in the 50s, it wasn't so easy to integrate, so the dentist was there and the teachers, all, I mean, people who you could look up to lived in your neighborhood. They, of course, left when they could. They wanted lawns like everybody else. But they gave me a reason to believe that was something that I could aspire to be other than what my parents were being. And they wanted me to aspire to be something different because they came from hard scrapple, super hard work, and they believed that knowledge would be a key to my having a better life. But here's the other thing. You cannot turn in the key in the door 
and be a responsible individual if you don't drag somebody with you. If you're not there for someone else, why am I on the earth? Why am I here? Am I here just to be the most fabulous Joy Scott? Well, yes, that's true. But that's not the only reason I'm here. I find my nourishment, my joy, and receiving that and giving that to others. Uh, it makes for a very fruitful, fat, P-H-A-T and F-A-T-T, -T, a life that's filled with the knowledge that you've done well and that the, stolder, and that the shoulders that you stand on are lifting you up through pride. I can never forget that it wasn't just difficult for others. People died so that I must be here. I, why would I go and be any other place? How could I be swaddled in that DNA and that memory just because I wanted to be comfortable? I want a real life. And that's why I stay with my folks. It's short. You know, I could go on forever. This is a very short. God willing, I'll get to be 80, 85 years old. My mother lived to 95. The earth is a scrillion years old. Our, our time here is very short. So what I, I want to be is just run down and hung up wet. I want to jump up in the coffin and say, can I have three, four minutes? I, I want you to walk up to my coffin, although I cremated my mom, so now I have to burn myself in solidarity. I used to say, I want you to come up to my, to my um, tombstone, and as you're approaching it, it's motion activated and it goes, damn! That's the kind of life I wanna run. I wanna run, I wanna run through it, not alone. And I wanna know that once I get to heaven, and yes, I will be in detention for a long time. Uh, I've, I've left some footprints to stand gleefully in and that those people then make their own. I just said a lot, didn't I? That was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Kathy Davis. I'm Executive Director of Bayview Senior Services. And the Dr. Davis Senior Center is a location in Bayview that is really set for the community to have inspiration and hope around their culture. So African American culture is celebrated here and the best way to celebrate it is through art. Because people get to see themselves, people get to feel joy, people feel healing, people feel wonderful around art. So this whole building is really designed so kind of like a museum where people can come and see community art and get the spirit of the place and get the spirit of Dr. Davis who, you know, this is his vision really to make sure that there was an Afrocentric focus in the Bayview and he really got to create that through this building in his honor, but he wasn't here to see it. So it was my job to make sure that we continued his vision and made sure that, especially through art, we were able to present the culture of people and have them feel welcome and have them feel connected to who they are through art. I really love the art in this building because it really celebrates people and it's a very healing thing to just see beauty around you. Well, we are so grateful that the Dream Keepers funding came through and supported our intergenerational program because I see that as connecting the wisdom of the past and the future together. And for young people and seniors to connect around, especially around the artistic things that we're doing, gives them an opportunity to get to know each other, learn each other's history, and connect. So we love the fact that we've been able to grow that program through Dream Keepers funding so that we could really engage the the kids and the seniors together. And I just love what gets produced there. All kinds of magical things happen when you put young people and seniors together. You don't always know what it's gonna look like. And it's just beautiful to see what they create together and the atmosphere that's created by intergenerational communication. So we're very blessed that we got this funding and that we're able to maintain the dream, uh, the uh, intergenerational program through our funding through DAS and Dream Keepers. Yeah.